good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining us on day one of the holiday planning party here with Girl About Travel and the Holiday Insiders Club. Um, I'm really pleased this morning, this, this lunchtime, to be joined by Bethany Garner in Chamonix in the French Alps and Penny Walker in the Pyrenees, in the French Pyrenees. Um, hi Beth, hi Penny, thanks so much for joining us today to talk all things European hi. mountains. Thanks for having us. No worries. Um, so let's talk first, um, Bet. just because you're straight beneath me, let's go to you first. Um, tell us, you're, you're in Chamonix, tell us what's that like? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the Chamonix Valley. Um, well, today the sun is shining, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> the snow's melting quickly, uh, getting ready for summer. Um, so yeah, just based, just outside of Chamonix, but you know, our valley has got, well, not just Chamonix, we've got saint Gervais, we've got Megève, and not too far down to Morzy, Leger, etc. So a good, a good base for the winter and for the summer as well. Fabulous. And Penny, tell us, whereabouts are you? Uh, yes, hi. I'm based bang in the centre of the French Pyrenees, so midway between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, um, in sort of the Bagnères de Luchon area, which is a, a year-round destination for outdoors lovers. Um, as uh, Bet says, yeah, the snow is melting rapidly here too. The rivers are swelling, ready for river sports. And uh, the brown bears have come out of hibernation, which is really exciting, but I'll tell you more about those shortly. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us to um, talk about how to, yeah, just how to plan incredible holidays to this this space that I think people maybe just assume is good for skiing and that's it. So we were talk, we're going to focus on, um, yeah, summer holidays in European Lakes and Mountains. Let's dive in. Um, first question is, why, why would anyone come to the mountains in the summer? What's so special about them? And that's to both of you, really. I mean, these, you know, let's, let's just open it up, have a good discussion. Do you want to yeah, go first, well, Penny? You go first. Yeah, I'd love to, but I'd love to. I mean, for me, the, the mountains, the Pyrenees mountains in particular, it's all about wild open spaces, about rugged views, about the wildlife and the flora, the fauna. Um, it's a really unspoiled mountainous area. That's what I love most about it. You, you don't see so many people around as you do in many other mountainous areas. It's, it's totally unspoiled. You've got pure mountain air as well, which obviously everybody appreciates and just wide open spaces. And obviously you've got more outdoor activity adventures and uh, such like to, to enjoy for all ages. It's not just for the kids and for families, it's for adults as well. Uh, year round holiday destination. We've got uh, Spain just across the border or along the valley, depending on which route you take. So yeah, the uh, the mountains is uh, is really uh, for me. It's it's just the environment I want to spend all my time in, if at all possible. I'm sure you'd feel the same. Yeah. How about you, Bet? What do the mountains in summer mean for you? I think um, I think a lot of people come to to the Alps in the summer for the fresh air, the scenery, mm -hmm. and something very different to a beach holiday. Um, although the resorts do can get busy, particularly in say August and the holidays, mm -hmm. you've always got space. Um, and I think people value that. I think also mm -hmm. you can get really good value for money in the summer. Um, I'm not sure exactly the comparison with a beach holiday, but I would expect it's it's probably similar, if, if not cheaper. Um, and there's such a variety of activities to do. You know, you can to be you can be tranquil, you can be swimming, you can use the spa, you can go for short, you know, gentle walks, or you can go a bit more extreme. You can do mountain biking of all levels. You can do big mm. hiking. Um, and I know. Some resorts like um, I work with Les Arc and there they've got so many other things you'd never expect. So, for example, they do uh, kids stuff that's got archery, circus skills, like trapeze skills, um, golf, you know, the, the list goes on. So, yeah, it's a really good active holiday for the summer. That's cool. That's good to know. I mean, I guess it's not really comparable to a beach holiday, is it? But if people are thinking, well, I just want to relax on my summer holiday, how does that work in, in the mountains? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly here in the Pyrenees, I mean, the beauty, I should say, first of all, of the Pyrenees and particularly our location is that you can have a week's beach holiday on the Atlantic or the Mediterranean coast, choose which you want, and then a week in the mountains. So you can combine a beach holiday with a mountain holiday, which, mm. is, a lot, which is what a lot of the families that, that I welcome to the Pyrenees end up doing. So it keeps everybody happy. 
Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's 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 just a fabulous area for for combining the two of them. And so I guess as well, like we've got some pictures of you know the the hot baths or the the mountain lakes. You can just have a nice gentle stroll to one of those and then lie by the lake all day if you wish. I guess there's nothing to you can nice. do exactly what you want, can't you? Well, that's right. You've got wild swimming opportunities galore. The little mountain lakes, as you say, are just perfect for having a quick dip in after a short hike. And you've got the thermal spa facilities as well, where you can, you know, spend quite a few hours if you wish. They are family friendly spa, uh, spa facilities nice. here in the Pyrenees as well. So, uh, yeah, you can combine that and foodie visits, visits to uh, local producers like the, the cheese producers and people who um, who make uh, mohair garments and uh, visit the ma master chocolate maker. The kids absolutely love visiting the master chocolate maker and the biscuit yeah. producer as well. Um, there is there is a lot that you can do probably in the mountain in a mountain environment that you you just don't get to do at a beach resort. It's much more varied, I think. Uh, so it's it's a totally different thing to a beach holiday, and it all depends on obviously yeah. what people want. I I completely agree with Penny. I think also what you remember is not you don't have to always be up in the mountain doing active things you know there's always um the base town so like near here we've got Salonche um near Les Arts, there's Borg Saint Maurice and there's markets you know there's lovely restaurants um there's the rivers the lakes there yeah. and also what I always find with with Alpine resorts is they make a big effort in the summer so they put on events they they make sure that people want to come to their destination because they unlike some beach destinations destinations that are just inundated with people all the time they don't really need mm. to try to in, entice tourists in um the you know the, the alpine destinations do a little bit more and i really find they make an effort and i think it's always worth checking out what your if you know where you're going to go or you want to do some research on where to go have a look at their websites and see what events are going on because there's always mm. something happening um and it might kind of swing your choice of where you might want to go that's yeah, a great totally tip. Agree. Yeah, definitely. Really worth checking out the tourist office, isn't it? Because yeah, as you say, they do. They throw. They just. There's incredible inventive events. Events they do. So yeah, no, definitely yeah. worth doing. Um, let's go. Let's talk about where your favourite places to visit are in across the the lakes and mountains of Europe. Where, Penny, first, obviously, um, in the Pyrenees. Where's your go-to places? Where should people be looking to book to? Well, it very much depends on what kind of a holiday experience you're wanting. If you want to be totally okay. off grid, away from it all, up in the wilds, then the Ariège Pyrenees, the Department of the Ariège, is is my recommendation. It is really off grid. It's oh, sorry, Penny, I'm just, just cracking it a little bit there. Um, just try again. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Pyrenees is the most rugged area of the uh, the Pyrenees chain, and that's that's why you can only go there. If there's one like you can't do with them all. Um, Penny, I'm gonna um Penny, sorry, the sound. I don't know quite what's happened with the sound. Let's just go to bed, and if you could just um yeah. come back out, come back in again. I'm sure it'll sort of sort it out. Bet, can you um tell us where where's your go to places across the across the Alps? I guess. Yeah, I think I would um, choose my destination in the Alps based on what sport or activity or, or kind of holiday I want. So say if you're a big mountain biker, um, straight away, I'd say look at Leger and Morzine in the French okay. Alps, um, Les Arcs and Les, Les Deux Alpes. They're probably my three top picks for, for, for um, all I want to say is VTT, which is the French the local <laughs> top, uh, mountain bike, mountain bike, mountain bike. I've, I've been living in France for too long. <laughs> no, I'm um, I think for, for hiking, I think you can't choose a better destination than Switzerland. You know, it is, is stunning. The mountains there are mm. stunning, particularly kind of the Bernies Oberland around there, like beautiful, you know, kind of, as you know Heidi type um, <laughs> terrain there um, and then if you want something I guess more you know spas whatever I'd, I'd look at some of the Austrian um, resorts that have got like the natural spas around there so yeah I, I it's, it's a really hard choice to know where to go to be honest um, somewhere like somewhere like Les Arc or Leger it's kind of quite as it is as maybe it is in the winter a bit like purpose-built resort activities all on tap like you literally walk to, out, out your hotel and everything's there whereas maybe in Switzerland Austria it's a bit more 
um, a bit more wild and a, and a bit less like the Hudson's and depends on what you're looking for, really. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, Penny, let's go. Apparently the sound is fine, so it might just be my end. Sorry. So, yeah, come let's um, come back to where were you saying about the sort of oh, remote? <laughs> Yeah, I was saying the um, if you want a really sort of off-grid, wild and rugged holiday in the mountains, then the Ariège Pyrenees is the area to go to, which is slightly further east of where we are here. It's closer to the Mediterranean. And that's where the majority of the brown bears hang out. We have over 70 brown bears in the Pyrenees chain now, um, as at the end of the winter. And they're mainly concentrated in our area of the Central Pyrenees, which is so exciting. And I always recommend people take a go on an outing with one of the like, expert local bear guides who takes you into bear territory so you can look for tracks and look, look for traces of their fur on trees and check the motion detection cameras to see if they've been passing and see if they've passed along that particular part of the path. And it's an absolute thrill. I can tell, tell you when you see the footage of the, uh, the bears on these motion detection cameras, it's such a thrill. But if you do want things like uh, the mountain biking, we have uh, the Luron Valley. Uh, Loudon Vielle is a world-class mountain biking destination to rival Leger and uh, Morzine. Um, we've got the Enduro World Series, which is taking place here at the end of September. Okay. That is also a perfect area for hiking, getting up into the high mountains. Uh, but it's also an area that has a lot of family-friendly hikes that people can enjoy. Plus, you've got the thermal, one of the best thermal uh, spa facilities in the Pyrenees in that area. You've got lots of foodie experiences as well. It, it, it's really an area, I think, the Luron Valley and the Luchon Valley areas where there's something for everybody, something mm. for everybody. So um, tailor making a holiday that uh, ticks the boxes for every member of the family is, is not a problem in the Central Pyrenees. Well, because um, we'll talk about it a bit more later, but you have put together an itinerary, haven't you, that for us that's in the holiday in our Holiday Insiders Club, and that's all yeah. about um, yeah family friendly activities, seven nights in the Pyrenees, and you can completely pick and choose, can't you, as to, as little yes. or as much as you want to do. So yeah, Absolutely. it's fabulous. Um, so how about, I mean, we touched on earlier thinking about um, looking at the events that uh, the destinations and the resorts, tourist boards, might be, tourist offices might be putting on. Any other insider tips you'd share on sort of how to how to make sure you're making the most of your time on holiday? I, I think um, checking, make sure you check the weather forecasts and bringing the <laughs> right. right. Very good idea. <laughs> No, because obviously it's not like going to the med where you're pretty much guaranteed you'll probably have a week of sunshine. You just need your bikini and your shorts. You know, you you will likely need uh, a range of, of clothing, some warm stuff, some waterproof stuff and some some summery hot stuff. Yeah. But check, check the weather forecast we go just to make sure. Um, and oh, with, with any holiday, I guess, I always think that, you know, do your research a bit on where you're going. Have a look at um, where you might want to eat if you're eating out in restaurants because I think otherwise you know you can just turn up and then just be like oh I'll just go to that place there but yeah doing a, a bit of research on what's available um and and also things you might get some deals on like the lift pass deals or there might be you know quite often some of the tourist office websites they'll put on a deal where you can buy a lift pass and you get um you know a deal on the accommodation at the same time so some kind of like yeah. um package not with obviously with the not with the flight etc but with um, local accommodations uh, so that would probably be my my kind of top tips before you go just um, um, for people who might not so be so sure why would you need a lift pass in the summer what's the how does that work yeah well, so a lot of the resorts, if you want to do some hiking in the higher mountains, rather than kind of walking right from the base of the valley up, you can take mm. a lift up and then maybe do it will be like a flatter loop or it means you're accessed into the higher terrain. You can do a loop. And also for mountain biking, um, not necessarily some of the cross country routes, but say if you want to do some of the what they call the bike parks. So with the, the man made trails, yeah. then then you might um, want to or they're quite often that's where you use a lift. And um, also, say, for example, in, in Les Arcs, you can go up high and they've got a, a, a small walk where you can where you can look out for marmots, like the little mountain yeah. animals, which is great, great with the kids. And again, you need to lift past to get up the lift. So, yeah, that's okay. um, most of the big alpine resorts will have their lifts open in the summer for, the, for those kind of things, those kind of activities. Brilliant. OK, thanks. Um, how about you, Penny? What would be your suggestions? 
Yeah, uh, very similar to uh, Tibet, actually. But I think in in the Pyrenees, the tourist offices tend to sort of hand out all the your regular uh, honeypot destination information, or the, the places mm -hmm. that you have to go and visit locally, which is not necessarily uh, the information that you need when you come to an area like the Pyrenees. I would recommend people tap into local knowledge to get off the beaten path, to visit the places that not everybody is going to go to. You don't want to turn up at a lake and every man and his dog is there, you know? It's, yeah. uh, I would recommend people tap into um, local knowledge and experience Hello. Uh, Hello. Well, yeah. this is why we are hosting this party planning week. <laughs> Hello, Hello, ladies. ladies. <laughs> to, to obviously find out the places, the best places to go where not everybody else is going to be going, to find out the best people, the best guides to go with if you want to explore yeah. off the beaten track and see the wildlife, and also to find out the best local producers to visit and maybe even um, book a, uh, an accompanied visit to a local market where you meet the local producers. You can taste the you can taste the hams, taste the biscuits and find out where you can visit to, to really get to the heart of, of life in the area. Uh, that would be my top recommendation. Perfect. So basically, Penny, you're saying, actually, everyone just needs to join the Holiday Insiders Club to get access to these destination experts. Completely. Thank you for... <laughs> No, but that's that is good to know. Thank you. Um, so, just on a sort of practical level, how about? Um, I mean, we've talked about the the lifts, the chairlifts, gondolas being open, and things when you're there. But how about um, actually just travelling to these destinations? How easy is it, and how does it work? I, I feel like you know people know about beach holidays. It's easy. You just get on a plane, yeah. and then somebody picks you up. How does it work in the summer? Well, in, I mean. In the month? Certainly in the Pyrenees, you've got so many different options to get here. It really is accessible. You can fly, obviously, to Toulouse Airport is the main airport yeah. hub. Um, although I'm trying to dissuade people from flying, if at all possible, but rather take yeah, the train. Yeah. Yeah. The evening train, um, a Eurostar from, uh, from London, early evening through to Paris, change to the overnight train down to Toulouse from where you can either hire a car to come and explore all the different areas of this uh, the central Pyrenees, or you, again, you can get a local train a bit closer to the foothills and then hire a car. And okay. the, you, there are even sort of little local uh, networks, the rail networks are now starting to reopen in the area, which is so exciting. So you can actually get from the main rail stations in the foothills all the way up into the mountains by train. That'll be in 23 though, that's not this year, that's next okay. year. Okay. That's fine. So for, That's for fine. people who've got a bit of an environmental conscious consciousness, they, there are options where you don't have to fly. But hire, recommending, I recommend you do hire a car, though. It's absolutely essential if you're going to really explore yeah. and get to the heart of the area. No, definitely. Fair enough. Um, what about you, Bet? How about for the Alps? A bit yeah, of a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, de depending on which part of the Alps you're going to, you know, there are there are lots of different hubs. So say for the main French resorts, in terms of airports, you're looking at Geneva, Lyon, Chambéry, Grenoble. Um, it, you know, the, the most, the, 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 the hub with the most frequent uh, flights is probably Geneva. Um, yeah. And then for Italy, you've got Milan, Turin, Austria, Innsbruck, Salzburg, and for Switzerland, Zurich, um, Bern, some flights there, or, or Geneva again. So it really depends where you're going. Line mm. Penny, um, you know, the train is 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 not a ridiculous option for the Alps at all. Um, great to hear. Again, there's a lot there's of no... the comments on the train actually as well. I'm taking the like, yeah, there's, the there's, there's not any direct trains uh, in the summer, but again, it's it will be one change or two changes. So in same as for, for Penny, so. In, from St Pancras into Paris, a change in Paris, and then down to, say, Bourg Saint Maurice, if you're looking at um, the big French resorts. Um, there might be an extra change in Chambry, depending on um, where you're going. But also, um, you, sometimes you can look at whether you can change in Lille, that's another idea. And then you can also get into Austria and Switzerland. So, um, yeah, okay. it's sometimes not the easiest way to, to not very easy to find that information i'd have a look at a website called snow carbon which is i know it's obviously got snow in the name but it's a uh, the guy who runs it dan, Al dan alkin he's got some really good insider knowledge on the train um but yeah it's yeah. it's it's if you if you're you know worried about the environment then that is a is a good option for sure yeah. for, the Actually, for anyone just watching we just took the train to the french alps so do feel free to ask me as well yeah. because yeah we changed in Paris. and just really really quickly but is that also you um 
you can hire a car. That is an option. Uh, I don't know if you've done anything in the Insiders Club about car hire, but it's is pretty expensive at the moment so mm. other options if you just want to go and be based in one place then there still are transfers running to bit most of the the out you know the big alps oh, destinations so no okay. not the same frequency as in the winter but they they do exist and they do run oh that's good to know okay um, last, last quick point is on a seat of course so oh oh sorry penny i oh, sorry the sound has gone again Oh. Can you hear me, Penny? Because it, it's six Oh, seat61.com for the track. Yes, absolutely. It's yes. a great website, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. Um, I'm gonna um thank you. So I've got a couple of questions that um party party goers have shared with us that we just wanted to touch on quickly as well, please. Um some uh, Katrina has been asking um about wheelchair access. Which resorts are particularly good for mm. accessibility in a wheelchair? Yeah, well, certainly here in the Pyrenees, Loudon Viel in the Luron Valley is an area I would always recommend wheel wheelchair users to visit because it has um, some wonderful uh, sort of circuits around the lake for, that are accessible via wheelchair. There are restaurants that are accessible for wheelchair users um, and anybody with mobility issues. There's also accommodation in this part of the Pyrenees that is adapted for wheelchair users. Plus, we have a couple of activities. If you're a bit more of an adventurous wheelchair user, you might like to consider such as the, uh, the Joalette, which is like a, an off-road off wheelchair, which is pulled and pushed by your accompanying people to get you wow. up into the mountains like uh, like a normal hiker but in a wheelchair you can even mm -hmm. stay in a mountain refuge if you're a wheelchair user um, oh. and then the other activity is uh, is the simgo which is like an off-road uh, mountain bike but again for wheelchair users and of course you've got the handy ski in the resorts as well for anybody with mobility issues so it's um, the accessibility holidays is something I am really looking forward to putting forward for, for people next year, 2023. I'm working on a number of different packages for uh, people with mobility issues. So, uh, yeah, watch this space. We'll see what we can come up with. Fab, excellent. Thank you. Um, Bet anything uh, sort of Alps wise that would work? For wheelchair yeah, um, I think so. somewhere like Chamonix, which is... Um, you know, it's it's not like some of the resorts, you know, you've got a, a, a big flat area and then there's a, they've got some accessible walking tracks um, coming out from just one side of the town. Um, and some of the other resorts I know, for example, up in La Plan, for example, they they're, all their lifts um, can be accessed. So, again, like Penny was saying, that we, there are, they've got mountain bikes that are set up for disabled users and wheelchair users, and they can use the, the lifts in the summer as well. So, um, yeah, I, I don't I, I don't know across the whole Alps. I'm, no. I'm not an expert across the Alps, but I do know those two resorts would Excellent. work. No, it's good to hear that at least, yeah, there's, there's options. That's great. Um, last question as well from Sharon. Um, how about um, how do the resorts and destinations cater for beginners um, sort of people who you know want to just try all these activities and sports we've been talking about? Yeah, it's. I mean, here in the Pyrenees, we're perfectly set up for anybody who wants to explore the outdoors for, for the first time, uh, dip their foot into hiking. It's not all about big mountain hiking. Uh, that's the first thing to emphasise. Certainly here in the Pyrenees, there are a lot of lower level, easy uh, walks that are adapted for, for families, people with young children, people with mobility issues, uh, walks along tracks to picturesque lakes and such like. Um, there are, is mountain biking on waymarked and graded tracks and trails, e-biking, if you fancy having a go yeah. on the e-bikes. We have e uh, a lot of e-bike activity in the area, again, on waymarked and graded trails. The same as like the, you know, the ski piece, we have the, the mm. green, the red, the black, so you can pick the level that is suited to you. Um, and again, always tap into local knowledge, get, uh, get a, an outing arrangement with a local guide who will adapt the outing to, to your ability. So they know the best places for you to go to have the experiences that you want, maybe to see the marmots and the, the birds of prey up uh, around, around the ski resorts. So easy, easy walking for everybody. So again, just tap into local knowledge to find out where the best places specifically are for you to go if you're exploring mountains for the first time. Definitely, yeah. Anything yeah, no, you can do about it. 
Well, as Penny says, it's, it, if, if you think of it as a bit like a ski resort in the winter, there's there's basically instructors and uh, mountain leaders and mountain guides on hand. Um, and again, just like if you were going on a beginner ski holiday, you might be going on a beginner's mountain bike holiday or you just want uh, a mountain leader to show you um, some of the good walks. And then, yeah, if you are feeling even a bit more adventurous, then you could look at mountain guides, which will do something maybe a bit more gnarly. Like so in Chamonix, for example, you could go and do some alpinism. So up in on the glaciers in the snow might not be your idea of a, a, a great summer holiday, but <laughs> it might be. Take yourself out of the comfort zone. So, yeah, there's there are professionals that you can turn to and, and to book. And, yeah, they will they you know, can hold your hand along the way. Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much, um, ladies. Thank you for joining us. And as I mentioned earlier, Penny, you have uh, we have got an itinerary from you for, uh, for, that covers a lot of what we've talked about, haven't we, in the Pyrenees. So that's sitting within the Holiday Insiders Club. We'll be sending more information out about that um, to everyone as well. But um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much for your brilliant insights, the pair of you. It's been wonderful talking. I feel like we could have talked all day, but I'm determined to do it. It's relatively short and sweet. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow at one again. Tomorrow talking North America. So we're road tripping across North America, Eastern Canada. Um, so that's tomorrow at one. But yeah, in the meantime, don't forget to post your photos as part of our My Dream Holiday Challenge um, to win these brilliant prizes that we've got featured from our sponsors on the side. So yeah, thanks everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, thanks Bex. Bye. Bye. Bye.